そこの壁の本座って、いくつかまくまだった、そにちゅんのひつがね、私はあなたに、ただ、こすきとあった。これはあるこまた、おこなあるはファルマとか、これはふつのあるまつえんさした。くむはくむおほろい、からのあなた、おはがしたかれのくちにけろにしょえじかれのゆきをすわてすとんかこれはきつのぬしみついかれにきこくしゃいたものですわたしがもともふきなまのにいといくるができアクアマン How in God's name are you alive? That's a good question my old friend <laughs> It's so great to see you, man! We should have seen this coming a mile away. Come on, Green Lantern, that's just taking it too far! Gah! Anyway, so tell us, my aquatic friend, how is it you're alive and back with us? Well, seeing as I've no parents and I'm the chosen one, I combined the three partridges of Deus Ex Machina together, and with a little dash of friendship from my buddies, I was brought back to life. Because I'm really super duper important and stuff. Oh no, I see what's going on here. I refuse to take part in this. I am not doing an anime episode. But this is your destiny, bruh. Oh Jesus, there's no such thing as destiny, and I'm not taking part. It's typical that he doesn't want to accept his responsibilities. He's a disgrace to the prophecy. Just five minutes ago, you were trying to kill me. Now you're telling me I have some prophecy to fulfill. Get out of here with that bollocks. Green Lantern is right. Us trying to kill you was just part of the prophecy. We had no choice! But why did you put your arm in the air and scream? You can't just scream a line of dialogue to try and trick the audience into thinking it's somehow important. Look, if you don't want to do it, we'll just get Ryu Shinji san over there to complete the prophecy instead. I'm a good guy. I'm pretty good at fighting, but I'm brash and let my temper get the best of me sometimes. I hate injustice with every being of my soul, but my friends help me get through my troubles along the way. You know, if that guy just fucks off, I'll do whatever the hell you want. Anime is the immensely popular Japanese style of animation and is typically used to tell stories in a much broader way than the way we tend to use animation over here in the West, which is often associated with media that is designed with primarily children in mind. In Japan, anime is just another form of entertainment in the same way everyone over here watches TV or movies. But we all know what anime is. What you want to know is what makes me <clears throat> hate it. Because if the title of the video mixed with my YouTube name is anything to go by, I must be a complete asshole who is nothing but a mindless hater, right? Better get your dislikes and hate comments ready now, uh, supreme anime fans, because I'm almost certainly gonna make your butt hurt a bit. Oh wait, let, let me help you get a head start on that. You suck cock dick and anime is better than anything you could do, douche ass. You are just jealous of anime because you don't understand it. Well, I hate you too. There, now that's out of the way. Here's a bunch of stupid shit that anime does that drives me crazy. Character archetypes. Each and every style of media has tropes. There's no arguing that. Action movies, horror movies, comedies, whatever. And anime is no exception. More specifically, from what I've experienced myself from anime that I've seen, is that there seem to be a set list of character cutouts that, despite how much I may like or dislike them, are extremely noticeable and sometimes teeter on the verge of being completely laughable. For example, is there a reason that a large portion of anime protagonists have to be a hot-headed boy who is pretty good at fighting, or at least eventually learns to become a great fighter, who will flip their shit when they see any type of crime or injustice, and will proceed to try and attack bullies or whatever despite how unrealistic their chances may be? Or what about that classic backup character that is better than everyone in terms of their skills, but keeps themselves reserved and only actively does anything when a cool action scene is needed, or to keep the hot-headed main character under control? Perhaps a tragic backstory makes them more distant than the other more colourful characters, while inside they're actually really caring and emotional. Oh, and let us not forget about that third wheel sort of character. You know, the one that's not quite as skilled or cool as the other character, but it's the cute one who may be a little bit more clumsy or shy than the rest of the cast. Chances are they're a childhood friend of the protagonist and usually have more depth to them than the main character despite their pathetic nature. 
Obviously breaking down character traits into such simple descriptions might not be fair, seeing as you are missing out on all the specific details, and can completely change depending on the genre. The previously mentioned archetypes typically applying to what is apparently known as shonen, which basically means boy animes, primarily action based affairs such as Naruto, Attack on Titan or Full Metal Alchemist. I don't claim to be some sort of anime expert, but when a schmuck like me can notice such cardboard cutout characters without really thinking about it or analysing it, perhaps there's an underlying laziness built into the base of these shows, in a similar way to how pretty much every superhero movie from the last five years has been the same movie with the name swapped around. The weird way they do dialogue. Seeing as Japan is such a different culture to what I'm used to, it's no surprise that I have some weird problems with how some animes convey the story through the use of dialogue. It can really stand out to me as being quite heavy handed and can get quite tiresome to hear characters discuss over and over about why what they are doing is so important or why what they're about to do is so important. Anime also seems to have the tendency to over explain the inner workings of how character traits or feelings work. You don't need to explain that a specific character is good at fighting or good at planning things through or whatever it may be, because we can already see those skills in action through the visuals, which admittedly might be a problem down to budget because it is much easier to have someone say a throwaway line of dialogue as opposed to staging an elaborate action scene just to establish that they can fight well. The reliance on story beats such as destiny, fate or friendship can also get immensely tiresome, especially when we've reached a point where media in general is trying to be more preactive in trying to play with people's preconceived expectations. Again though, this is not a fair representation of the entire genre of anime, because it's just so broad and there's so much to choose from, but you know, it is still kind of a problem that I just can't get past. Yeah, stop! I'm only like halfway through my points on anime though. Like I care, I'm really super evil. That's him. That's the guy who killed me. That's why I'm here. To finish the job. Let's take him down, bruh. No. This is up to me. To be continued in part two. Click here when I actually get it done. Is that racist? I think that's a little bit racist. Holy mother of all things, what Tashiwa. That doesn't even make any sense. The action and excitement is too much for my fragile ego to handle. Oh, and by the way, this is part one of two if it wasn't entirely clear, even though it really should be, because I have just too much to say in so little time. So stay tuned for that. But anyway, what do you think? Do you like anime? Even if you do like it, like super, and you're super, super into it, can you still see some of the points I'm trying to make here? I should probably say that I do actually like some anime, but whatever. Tell me in the comments below. Oh, and a special thanks to James and Sally for helping me with this episode. So as always, thanks for watching. All comments and raisings are appreciated. I'll see you next time. Bye.